Hey gang, how's it going? Welcome back to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thank you so much for joining me today and thank you for painting. In this video, we're gonna go over the steps on how to paint this tabby cat that is looking over the table and it looks like he's uh, trying to get a treat or whatever you might be working on. So I think it looks really cute. What you're gonna see in this video and all my videos is there is a link below in the description box and that is a link to a supply kit. And in that supply kit is everything that you need to create this particular painting. So click on that link, check out what you need and gather your supplies. Another thing that you're gonna see in this video is a traceable. And a traceable is a way for you to get that initial image on your canvas or your paper before you even start painting. And for my beginner and first time painters, this is a very useful tool to take out some of the stress of getting that composition on your canvas. So utilize the traceable. There is a link for how to transfer that traceable and a video, so check that out so you can get everything prepped before you even start painting. So as you go through the process today, I don't want you to take yourself too seriously. I want you to relax and have fun, get expressive, paint outside the lines, look at it as practice and getting more comfortable with your tools and your brushes. That's it. So that takes a lot of the stress out hopefully for you. Um, so enough talking, let's go ahead and get started painting. All right, so let's get started painting. I want you to turn on your favorite music and head on over to wherever your setup is. Relax, take a deep breath. Hopefully pour yourself a glass of wine if you have one. And as always, make sure you take your progress photos. And once you have your traceable transferred to your canvas or your panel, you're gonna use your liner brush or your small pointy brush. And we're gonna outline all those lines and this is just practice i want you to get comfortable with the brush and the pressure of your brush don't worry about it if you have some lines that are kind of choppy maybe some are thick some are thin don't worry about that we're going to actually do this step again at the end and i want you to make the lines thicker when we do this step the second time now you notice on the eye i did fill in the pupil and you can actually reference the uh, traceable for that as well. And breathe and relax. If you, hold, if you are holding your breath, take a deep breath for me. It's gonna be okay. And just kind of get lost in the process of painting, the, lost in the process of turning this white surface into an image. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo, and we're gonna move into painting the background. And you can make the background any color that you want. For this one, I'm gonna use a light teal for above the table, and then a raw sienna and a burnt sienna combo, actually, for the table that the cat is leaning on. Now, if you're moving right into your background after painting those black lines, just kind of be careful as you come up next to the black paint with this light color. As you continue to paint, you will uh, get more comfortable of bringing two different colors next to each other without stressing about it. If it does kind of bother you, just let the black paint dry before you move into your background, which is what I did here. And we're gonna be filling in all that space. I'm using the small flat brush, but if you're working on a bigger surface, feel free to use a larger brush. And I am applying the paint um, kind of thick. Uh, it, I'm not adding a whole lot of water to this. And kind of like buttering your toast. And I'm not a, I don't put a lot of butter on my toast, but think about it like that. I'm adding enough that we're going to have some good coverage and it's going to, my brush is going to kind of glide back and forth on the canvas. If you happen to be using a lot of water, you're treating it a bit more like watercolors and that's okay. You just keep playing with that and find your comfort level um, with applying in that manner. And then maybe one day you paint again and 
Maybe you try the paint a little bit thicker, push your comfort zone a little bit, and then maybe you kind of find that you like it somewhere in the middle. You're not going to know until you try. All right, so here I actually took some more of the teal and applied it right on top of that lighter teal that we had applied everywhere and moved my brush back and forth and it's mixing the two colors together. It's actually just like mixing the color on the plate, but we're just doing it on our background instead. Make sure you're breathing, relax. Takes a lot of courage to paint at home. I'm proud of you. You're doing a great job. All right, so you're gonna clean your brush. We're gonna move down into the table colors. We're gonna grab some raw sienna and apply it right up underneath the chin and into the black line of the table. And then we will be applying some other color on top of it. And you're taking this from edge to edge. If you are painting on a canvas, feel free to kind of wrap these colors as you meet the edge of the canvas with the paint. Wrap that color around the edge of the canvas. It does look nice when you have color wrapping around your stretched canvas when you hang it on the wall. If you forget to do it like me, you can always paint it later or just paint it solid black and that's kind of contemporary. All right, so still using that flat brush, we're taking some burnt sienna and we're gonna be filling in that bottom right corner and overlapping some of that raw sienna with it. And if you're using the student grade acrylics, you may realize that your brush strokes are showing up quite a bit, especially with these two colors. So I'm gonna recommend that either you embrace having those brush strokes show up and kind of treat them like maybe the grains of wood and kind of work it into the painting, or either apply your paint a little bit thicker and then once you uh, kind of have it in the place that you want, use light pressure with your brush and you can kind of smooth out some of those brush strokes. So here I wanted a light section on this table that the cat's looking over. So I grabbed some pure white and I'm mixing it directly into the wet paint of that raw sienna. And again, you can do this with any of the colors. And you notice that, especially with the white, it blends kind of quickly. All right, so we're going to pause the video, take a progress photo, and we're going to clean the brush, move into black paint, and we're going to put the tabby stripes, the darkest areas, on first. And I am using this small flat brush. You're welcome to move to switch to the small pointy brush or even switch back and forth. And we're going to be filling in, like I said, the darkest spaces first, these tabby stripes and a few other areas. I'm gonna actually take this brush and while um, the table is wet, I'm gonna add a bit of a shadow on top of that raw sienna or the burnt sienna right underneath the chin. And because this paint is still wet on mine, hopefully it is on yours, I can kind of blend the two and soften that shadow. And as soon as I move my hand, you'll be able to see. Yeah, it may seem like kind of an intense shadow right now, but by the time we get to the end of the painting, and the rest of the canvas space is filled in, um, it doesn't seem as strong or as harsh of a shadow. So moving back into the shadows on our cat, black paint, uh, small flat brush. We're gonna fill in those shadows above the eyes and then move into the tabby stripes. And they do look kind of funny sometimes in between having like almost one black eye and then the other one not there. So again, kind of just observe the way your painting's gonna change as we go through the process today. And that's why the progress pictures are so important because you can kind of take pictures of those awkward moments. You may not quite know where it's gonna end up, but you can always look back after you know where your final painting is and look back and go, yeah, I wasn't sure at this point. And it also shows you it's a visual progress of how far you've come and how much you change that white surface, that flat white surface into a painting, into an image that has a 3D quality to it. 
All right, so I'm still using the black paint. I'm gonna get the stripes done on the other side. And for my first time in beginner painters, if you're holding your breath right now, take a deep breath, relax, laugh at yourself a little bit, smile. You're doing a great job. You showed up, you're painting. <laughs> So many people talk themselves out of even getting this far. You're holding the brush in your hand. Keep going. Yeah. If your tabby cat has, you know, maybe a distinct uh, M or V or shape or some, some type of personality mark that you want to add to your cat, take the liberty and add that. Change this painting to be what you want it to be. And take my instruction as just kind of light guidelines. I want you to kind of trust your instincts. And if you want to add more, not add something, change something, you have freedom to do that. All right, so take your progress picture. We're going to be moving into a lighter shade. We're going to move over to our burnt sienna. Yep. So again, feel free to adjust your shade if it's not enough. Like I want this to be a little bit more red. So that's why I went back and added more to kind of get that warmth of the kind of, um, of what our tabby color is going to have. And that's one of the things that you're going to witness as you paint. It's, it's basically color theory. We interpret our colors based on the color that's right next to it. So even though we made that color on our plate, and you're like, yeah, that looks pretty good. As soon as we placed it next to our other darker colors on here, it looked different. We interpreted it differently. And that's kind of one of the fun discoveries of art, is you realize how to view the world from different perspectives as you get into the creative process. And as you learn to mix paint and break down a painting, how to transform that white space into an image. You're going to be learning a lot as you go down this path. All right, so again, you're using the power of observation. You're taking a look at where I'm applying the color, and then you're interpreting that and translating it onto your canvas or your surface. And again, these are just guidelines, the general areas of where you should put these colors. <laughs> and it is quite amazing with just a few, two colors basically, how this cat's starting to take shape already. You're doing great. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. We're going to be moving on to the next step in a minute. All right, so we're going to take the color we were just using and we're going to add some white. So we're going to be stepping down from that color. And that was the black, the burnt sienna with a little bit of white on it and mixed in it. And again, we may adjust this color once we apply it to our canvas next to the other colors. And if you need to adjust yours and I don't, or I need to adjust it and you don't, it's okay. Do what you need to do for your painting. So again, using that um, small flat brush, I'm kind of holding it sideways and making little dash marks almost, or little dots. And you want to imagine that each brush stroke is kind of like a strand of fur. So I'm moving it in the direction that the fur would be growing. And it's kind of just kind of a nice thing to keep your brain busy with. And moving it in that direction is kind of just the normal direction that we would see the hair anyway. So it helps build that composition build the energy of the painting and the flow of the painting. All right, and again, you'll be 
utilizing the pause sections on these videos and pause them and observe the shape that I made or the shape that I applied that particular color in and then you translate that to your canvas. So art's not really about being picture perfect or photorealistic, but it's just kind of learning to look at things in a new manner. All right, so I'm actually gonna make a slightly darker shade or I've actually gotta make the color again. So if you have to make your shade again, don't, don't freak out about it being the exact same shade. If it's a little bit darker, maybe a little more red, a little bit lighter than your prior shade, that's okay. Cause we are, for this particular painting, we're gonna be going um, on a kind of an extended second round after we do our black outlines by adding more colors on top. And the more that you kind of mix your colors, the more comfortable you get and know what to expect as you mix your colors. I have a lot of my students that actually ask if that's all they can do is just mix colors because it's, it's kind of like a little science experiment and it's fun. All right, so again, we're adding our dash marks, moving our brush in the direction that the fur grows. And what we're doing is we're kind of chiseling away that white space of the canvas. We're starting with our darkest shades and kind of working backwards. And as we take away that white space, it kind of, the object that we're painting, the animal that we're painting, kind of comes to life. We've transformed this flat 2D surface into a 3D object. And that's what I tell my students, it's magic. You are magicians as you paint. And the progress pictures really help kind of demonstrate that. Right, so you're doing a good job. It's coming to life. Keep painting. Don't judge it in the middle of the painting. Wait until we get to the end. And I'm actually going to insist wait until tomorrow after you have a good night's sleep and fresh eyes. But just the fact that you're here painting, it's already successful. So, good job. Again, if, take a deep breath for me. You may not have realized it if you were holding your breath. Relax. Hopefully you're enjoying the music that you've turned on. Maybe you have the house to yourself or a section of the house to yourself. This is your space to just chill. All right, so take another progress picture. We're gonna move down to a lighter shade. So we're actually just taking white and adding it to the color that we were just using. And this is a good way to kind of, or good habits to get into when you're mixing your colors and doing shades, just kind of bumping down a shade or bumping up a shade from the color you were just using. And on the plate, you can kind of see where I, I just mix it right next to the color I was using so you can see the steps down. And again, we're filling in space here, making little dash marks in the direction that the fur grows. And even kind of overlapping the background as you get to the edge. And we'll be filling in a good portion of our remaining white canvas space with this color. If your paint is wet from the previous color and it starts to blend a little bit, kind of kind of work with that. Uh, don't freak out about it. If your paint's dry and it doesn't blend, that's okay. That's part of your style today. All right, so I'm going just a little bit lighter. I added a little more white to the mixture I was using. Again, you can kind of see that just step down uh, gradient. Yeah. 
And again, filling in a, the portions around the eyes and the cheeks. And trust your instincts. If you've got maybe a little more canvas space, go ahead and maybe put this color in those areas. Or maybe later we'll move back, you can move back into one of the darker colors and place it in there. We are gonna be adding some more shades on top of these base colors after we do our black outlines for the second time. So compared to some of the other videos that I've made, uh, we kind of stop after the black outlines. This one, we're actually going to be doing some more steps afterwards. And again, I want that to show you that you can layer paint quite a bit, layer acrylic paint quite a bit. And once you get past the underpainting, painting more is a good thing. So don't feel like you have to complete every painting in a short amount of time. Be willing to maybe have a painting that you spend six or 10 or 15 or even 20 hours on just so you can kind of see the difference and see what it's like to put that kind of work into something that kind of patience into something all right so here i actually went back to one of the prior colors and since i had the step down um, gradient mixing basically uh, made it easy for me to go back and grab that color to fill in the space so even though these are beginner painting videos uh, we're developing some good habits because I do want you to take classes from a variety of teachers. Check out many of the other amazing and really cool YouTube videos out there and take the parts from each instructor that work for you. Leave the rest. This is your creative outlet. All right, so take your progress picture. We're going to move into the next step. We're going to grab some raw sienna and white. So we're going for a light raw sienna. We're gonna fill in some of the warmer areas, the warmer colors on this little kitten. Actually, I don't think it's a kitten, a little tabby cat. Possibly looking at some food on the table and certainly something at once. All right, if you need to adjust your color, if you want it a little warmer, you can add a touch of yellow to that mixture or you can keep it kind of that creamy with just the white and raw sienna. You get to be the judge of that. And you can even try either or, see which one you like better. And then just paint over the one you don't like. If I'm using the small flat brush here to make these little dots, if that's too much for you, feel free to move down to the pointy brush. And as I said that, we move down to the pointy brush. It's nice to know that even when I do the voiceovers, I still think in the same way when I paint it compared to when I watch it and do the voiceover. I <laughs> uh, hope you guys at home get to enjoy that. So now we're going to add, make it an even lighter color. So I took some white, grabbed a little bit of the color I was just using. And my plate's kind of filling up, so I can't quite do the same step down gradation that I did on the other one. So you see that I mixed it right next to it. I'm going for those lighter little cheeks and underneath the eye area. Again, kind of chiseling away that white canvas space. You're doing a great job. Don't judge it while you're in the middle of the session. 
Wait until you're done. All right, pause the video, take your progress picture, and we're gonna fill in the eyes and the nose next. So clean your small pointy brush, and we're gonna do the nose. So we're gonna take a little burnt sienna, a little white, and a little red to make kind of this uh, deep pinkish color, deep reddish pink. And you're gonna fill in that whole shape on the inside of the nose. Got a nice, nice definition. All right, so now we're gonna take that black paint and we're gonna fill in the nostrils underneath the nose. And again, you use light pressure if you need to. You can do a bunch of little dots that overlap each other. And go ahead and outline the top of the nose. Just kind of cleans up the shape a little bit. All right. Now we're gonna make the eye color. So start with yellow and add a touch of green until you get to the eye color that you want. And you can see here I actually made it twice, so feel free to do it a second time if you didn't quite get it right on the first try. And we're gonna fill in the entire space of the eye except for that white circle and the black of the pupil. Nice, and if you happen to overlap the black when we do the outlines again, um, you can just overlap the eye color. All right, this cat's looking good. All right, so we're gonna actually take a little bit of that green, make it a little bit darker, and on the edges of the eye, add that darker green to it. And you are mixing this in with the lighter color. So you kind of can play back and forth with having a darker green edge to that eye with the lighter green on the inside. Completely optional. If you liked it before we added the green, you don't have to add that darker green. And again, if you overlap that kind of eyeliner on the top or the pupil of the eye, we will redo that when we do the black outlines next. If you need to, you can actually take some of that straight yellow and put it more on the inside and kind of blend it into that initial color that we put on for the eyes. All right, so you're gonna pause the video, take your progress photo, and we actually had a technical difficulty for the next step. So you're gonna take your black paint, pause the video here, 
and just do the outlines that you see here. And you can use little dash marks on the perimeter. And I re-outline the eyes and outline the ears with black paint. And then pick up here with this next step, we're gonna go back to our colors. We're gonna go to Burnt Umber and we're gonna start putting some darker shadows, some other layers on top of our fur. So we're kind of doing round two here on top of our underpainting. So I'm using that small flat brush, holding it sideways, and each brush stroke is a dash mark moving in the direction of the fur. And I am overlapping some of these other colors. And on some of the brush strokes, I'll actually leave a little bit of space in between. So that way the color from underneath can show through. So again, just kind of play with this. Trust your instincts. If you want to paint um, in an area that I don't apply that color, trust your instincts. Give it a try. And again, what we're doing is we're adding a second layer. We're going to be adding more depth. And again, this is why the progress pictures will be really good for you. So you can back and see by putting a second session or a second uh, round of painting on here, how much more volume, much more depth, much more detail we can get. All right, doing a great job. Keep going. And again, utilize the pause section so you can see where each of these colors was applied. And every now and then, get out of your chair, look at your painting from about 10 to 20 feet away, and assess it from that distance. About 10 to 20 feet is the normal viewing distance that we look at artwork from. We look, generally look at it from across the room while it's on the wall. And what we see from that distance is entirely different than what we're going to see while we're painting it when we're a couple feet in front of it. So remember to kind of give yourself different perspectives, different ways of looking at what you're creating, because we do tend to get kind of caught up sometimes in the details when we're so close. So still using that raw umber and adding another round of shadows onto this tabby cat. And it's bringing them even more to life. And using little dots and dash marks as we make our fur strokes here. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo, and we're going to move down to a lighter shade. So grabbing some white, going to that medium raw umber, burnt umber, sorry. And I did actually get a new plate. If you need to do that, feel free. And again, we're just going to be overlapping a couple different colors. Utilize the power of observation to see where I applied this. Utilize your instincts as to where maybe you need to apply it. And even though I'm not there to say yes, that is the go ahead and apply it there. You have to trust your instincts um, that are telling you to apply it there. So give it a try. And then step back from your painting and look at and assess how it looks like from that distance. So you're doing a great job. If you do really get stuck on a painting, check out my patron page. I do have a section on there where for a monthly fee, or you could do it for just one month if you want to, um, you can get one or two uh, feedbacks or critiques on your painting. And critique sounds kind of harsh, so I'd like to say it's just more feedback. But it's a place to, you can send me an image or a video of your painting, and if you're stuck, if you're just not sure at all where to go next, I'm here to help. So utilize that. Uh, the fee is just basically for my time and any bit of, I'll either do a video or an email or pull it into Photoshop so I can 
uh, kind of circle or define some of the areas that I'll want you to apply the paint. Um, but it is, I'm going to put some time into it. So I'm pretty busy. So I do have to actually charge for that. And you're helping fund this particular project, other projects that I do, lots of community stuff. So it's, it's not like money's going to waste. So like I said, utilize that if you need it. But the more that you paint, the more that you practice, just the better you're going to get and the more you're going to understand your process. All right, so again, you're going to utilize those pause sections. Take your picture. Take a look at where each of those colors were added. All right, and going down to an even lighter shade yet again, adding more white to what we were just using. And applying some of this light fuzzy fluff to the lighter areas. There's some of the highlight values. Again, if you've got a space that kind of feels like it's all the same color there. Maybe throw a few little dots of this color on top of it. Break up that color. Take a look at what it looks like from a distance. And keep going. Alright, so taking some white with just a little bit of our either raw sienna or you can even use your portrait pink. And adding that into a few sections. It's kind of a creamy, that warm color, a few of the colors that we used from the beginning. And one of my favorite things about painting is we're using the same color, but applied next to different colors. It looks different. Some places it looks a little bit more uh, warmer. Other places it looks a little bit cooler next to the gray. It has been one of the things that I have been fascinated with my entire career. All right, well this cat's turning out quite nice. I hope you are liking yours. Again, any other place that you feel like you might want to be adding any of these colors. A little on the nose, a little highlight. Again, cool how it's the same color, but it looks different based on where we apply it. All right, take another progress photo. And we're going to move into even lighter. So add some more white to the mixture you were just using. Either your white and raw sienna or your white and portrait pink. I'm kind of applying these close to the areas we were just working on. Again, I was working from the dark backwards to the light. And by putting some of these kind of um, gradations next to each other, it helps give us just more steps down, more transitions from the dark to the light areas. And as you paint even more, you'll develop even more steps between those transitions, and that's what gets you to more photorealism. So that takes time and practice and lots of time for some photorealism in there.
All right, so you're going to grab some pure white. We're going to put these final highlights on. And they're going to be the kind of those little wispy hairs inside the ears. You can use light pressure for that. And you're moving your brush in the direction that those hairs would be uh, moving, the direction that they're going. If you need to redo your catch lights in the eyes, feel free to do it at this step and just paint right on top. You do want it to overlap that pupil and the eye color. You can reference your traceable for the exact placement for that one. And as I'm painting this, I do keep it in the same direction just because I'm shooting the video, but feel free to rotate your canvas. If you're really good at making your brush stroke in one direction, you don't have to keep your canvas in this orientation. Turn it sideways, flip it upside down, put it on your lap, um, whatever is going to make it easier for you to make those brush strokes. And again, you can always practice these brush strokes on a scrap sheet of paper. And in this video, I am going to do the whiskers with the white paint and the brush strokes. So you can see how I do it here. Again, practice on a scrap sheet of paper. If you don't want to do the whiskers with the brush, you can use a silver Sharpie marker, but again, practice before you do it on the actual painting. It is a bit of a flick of the wrist and you want to keep an even pressure when you're doing it with the brush. So I do add some water to the white paint and I'll twirl my brush as I pull it out of the white paint to kind of keep that tip. And again, kind of just a flick of the wrist. Make sure you breathe before you make your brush stroke. It's not really to your benefit to hold your breath. Right, doing a great job. Thanks so much for painting. Um, make sure you get this into your monthly, weekly, daily would be awesome, but get it into a monthly routine for you. This is such a good healthy outlet to have. I'm really honored that you painted with me. Thanks so much, and I look forward to painting with you again. Anything that you need to do to just kind of reshape, go back to any of the colors that we've used, anything that you need to do for your painting.
Hey guys, I hope your tabby cats turned out really well. I hope you're proud of yourself for painting. I'm proud of you for painting and especially painting at home. Great job. Um, as you're uploading these to social media, please tag me at paint with lovejoy. I really want to see how these are turning out for you, how it's progressing and just the fun things that you guys are creating. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. Check out my other videos, check out the future videos that I'll be creating, leave comments on what you want me to create in the future. I do read those and, um, utilize those as making videos in the future. So I really appreciate you guys taking the time to paint with me. It is so therapeutic. Please keep painting, find as many creative outlets as you can in this stressful world. So happy creating. And I look forward to painting with you again. Cheers. And in that supply kit is everything that you need for a plane to pass by. <laughs> At least one day it's not too bad of a traffic day. All right, we're gonna take that again from the top. Plane, we're gonna do that again.